few things. One, why am I out of focus? One. Okay, I think I know what's going on. Okay, so out of focus. Ah, there you go. <laughs> There's settings within the camera itself and then also on the lens. Whenever I have gum, I'm chewing it and I add it later, I can see my, nah, it's just, it bothers me. Very short, very sweet, 300th vlog. That is nuts. So on day number two of uh, vlogging, definitely interesting to wake up and to pick up a camera and talk to it. Another uh, exciting day of training with Colleen. Can we appreciate, I can't even, I'm laughing too much. I just watched that clip, hold up. I remember the first time I picked up the camera, it was so awkward and we're gonna, maybe the next vlog or the one after that, we're gonna dive very much into starting this vlog and getting comfortable in front of a camera. But man, that is just <laughs> two, two things. One, I love the fact that I have those memories and they'll forever be on the internet and I'll have them and I can go to them. But just two, just the growth, the comfort of talking to a camera and not feeling just so awkward. <laughs> like, I don't know if y'all felt as awkward as I did watching that, but I mean, I digress. <laughs> let's get to the, let's get on with this video. Like, I want to get better at this. I want this to be like more like uh, thinking out loud where this content is really just uh, insight to uh, me pursuing a passion that was four years ago four years 300 vlogs 75 vlogs a year we can definitely do better than that storytelling and everything it's just getting a lot more fun there's still so much that I want to do better at and just to enhance the storytelling nature of this 300 down 300 plus a heck of a lot more to go technically and some of y'all have congratulated me on this we hit a thousand subscribers but it's a thousand like exactly and sometimes youtube will like fluctuate like it'll go up by one then down by two whatever so i'm gonna wait till like we're at like a thousand and two or three to really be like hey we did it but it's still cool nonetheless just to even be around that number i remember when i was doing these vlogs five subscribers ten subscribers to even get near a thousand is just a blessing and i'm so humbled by it and it's just so cool that this community continues to grow i'm kind of giddy with happiness right now over this and where this is going and to me this was an internal goal it means nothing you could have 10 subscribers and you are truly like a youtuber if you're doing it to me it was always this thousand subscriber benchmark of once i hit a thousand subscribers i was like a youtuber like i i kind of did it. it just means a heck of a lot to me we've had a lot of growth in the last four years going to continue growing grow the community both this youtube channel and crossfit and everything just a lot more to grow than just uh kind of like what i'm directly tied to so cool so cool all right back to the video it's a fun one all right all right, all right, all right. Quick introduction. It makes it look like I'm outside in the forest or something. Quick introduction to the vlog, because I need to get going. Competing today, the Valentine's Day Massacre at Tiger's Den, It's which is like three two blocks away from D-Town, so perfect, local comp. Fair bit of teams involved. I'm competing with Sarah, who you saw in the last vlog, and then Brady and Sam are doing it, and then there's a bunch of other people from other gyms all across Texas. I'm guessing, I'm guessing people didn't come in out of state. That's what we're doing. There's three workouts, including a floater workout. What a floater workout is, you do it basically any time throughout the day, you just sign up. Uh, it's basically an individual workout, like you and your partner do that individual, or I'm doing a horrible job explaining this. You do it on the side. So rather than doing like a workout with everyone where you're facing off against everyone, you do it like individually. So like you get a time slot, you do the workout, you're not going toe to toe with anyone. Three workouts, one floater. I'm excited. I love competing, especially as uh, any kind of team stuff. So Sarah's awesome, awesome CrossFitter. So see how it goes. I'm excited. On the water, it's like stars on the waffles. Is it in the morning? I'm making waffles. All right, see all the gym. Okay to be on YouTube. Of you course. Do you want to introduce yourself? This oh is my our gosh, judge. Yes. Hello. My name is Akugo. I will be judging very strictly this team. Yeah, that's what's about to happen. Okay, first workout: 70 wall balls, 20 cleans, 70 wall balls, 12 cleans, 70 wall balls, six cleans. The weight goes up in the cleans. Wall balls stay the same at 70. Woefully underwarmed up, but I think this will go well.
know, they're like hard for me. Like Post game on that workout, we were originally gonna go 5-5, five, 5-5 five, five, five on the first set of cleans. Sarah called an audible, which was good, made a speed up. We got second in the first event. I'm actually, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, hardest part, probably the wall ball. I don't know, maybe the cleans at the end. 225 actually felt a little heavy, but no, that was a that was a smooth workout. Sarah, post game. Okay, so because I'm older and wiser than Connor, I called an audible, like you said, to do tens, and I think that helped because the team in front of us was flying through the first part of it, but then they exploded, so that's good. The goal is always to be smooth and steady, so I think Connor's gonna learn that this weekend by working out with me, because that's how I win competitions. We have a flow to work out next, so we're gonna do this independently from the rest of the comp. And it's, uh, I'll do a 500 row, and then two power snatch at 135 with four burpees over the bar. Yeah, flow to work out, it's all with the complex, not the row. Post game on that little uh, floater workout. Probably could have gone a little faster, but that's fine. Stayed with it, kept moving on the snatches. Sarah, how was that for you? I literally blew up. I blew up so bad. I feel like I let the team down, but I knew going into that workout that it wasn't gonna be my best because power snatches at 95 aren't really my forte. But I think the next two are more in my, my feel. So I think we're gonna full send it. This one is eight rounds for time. You go, I go. 12 toes of bar, nine single dumbbell snatches, six, box double dumbbell box step overs and then three double press eight rounds for time should be grippy just send it full f then sorry no swearing I can That workout got pretty freaking grippy. And actually, my grip stuck to the bar. 
and it ripped it clean in half. Half of my grip was just stuck on the bar. It was just sitting like this. It was just hanging from the bar. And I was like, but then on the second round, I just went up and put my hand on it. Yeah, just like it was this built-in grip. Brady and Sam beat us. We got second. We'll see how the next heat goes, but so far we got second and second, and then we don't know about the floater because not everyone's done it. All right, we're gonna get some post game now. Which one are you? First two I'm out of here. Got a little work. Nice. Well, yeah. What's your post game on that workout? <laughs> uh, you lost to Brady, so that's that's the post game. You know, that's a wrap. If I were you, I'd probably just pack my gym bag and just walk in there. <laughs> you guys did a great job. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Toast of our faster next time. Yeah. See ya. I'll go first. Uh, I don't need to give my post game because I dominated. Just imagine someone dominating a workout. That's what I did. I'll give it to Brady. Alex pointed it out. His toes bar are way faster than the rest of the groups. Like instead of skipping, Brady just shoots his feet down enough to pass the bar coming back because your feet have to swing back and pass the plane of the uh, rig. Brady was just going right down instead of kipping, and it's really fast for like sprint workouts. So I'll give it to Brady. That was that was good. Let's stay over here. Post over there. If I had a gold tooth, that would be so cool, dude. I want one so bad. Just a gold cap right here. Pretty sure we all tied. And by all, it's uh, us, four. us two and. <laughs> That's such shit. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do a tiebreaker though, so I'm actually humbly, humbly will accept this. Slapping contest. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> or just yeah. one of these, just like. A... Uh, no. <laughs> I just want to point out that they got a six and then some like first. But we got second, second, second. So that's consistent. And that means we're well rounded athletes. First place, there was a tie. So you two in high grade time on the rower. Yeah. Booty and the Beast took second. Yeah. Third place, there was a tie. So you two in high grade time on the rower. Let's go. <laughs> Well, Dick, here's the deal. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence. All right, change. We won because of the rowing tiebreaker. Let's go. First place, everyone. Let's get a uh, let's get Sam's post game on that. How do we feel about that, Sam? That's that's some shit right there. Five seconds on the rower for the tiebreak time. I don't know. Whatever, dude. Brady, how do we uh, post game on this? Okay, so here's the thing. So on the floater workout, the tiebreaker for the floater was your row time. So let's say two teams got 60 reps. The tiebreaker would have then been who rode the fastest. Normally for the entirety of the event, if there's a tie, you default to most event wins, which would have been Sam and I, because we had two number ones, baby. So they used the tiebreaker from a different event that I won, that we actually won the event or placed higher on. So they used the tiebreaker for something, bunch of bullshit. <laughs> I'm 
excited to keep doing this and uh, I hope you guys uh, come along for the journey. <laughs>